everybody and welcome to another Houdini tutorial. My name is Kate and today we'll be building something kind of similar to almost a liquid-esque smoke simulation. During this past week I was researching hydrodynamic simulations that NASA uses to simulate dark matter in the universe. So of course I ended up diving deep into smoke sims um, and also anything that involves dynamics. And it was a big rabbit hole but I'll digress. So let's get into this. Uh, this one's a little bit more simple than my nebula setup, which you can see in a different tutorial. So for lights, the only thing I really added was an area light, which has an intensity of this, and a transform of this. For the environment light just placed in the scene, didn't change anything, but I just added an environment map, which is one of the default maps in Houdini. If you go to Houdini, pick HDRI, and I've just pick the nighttime option. I have two cameras and these two cameras you'll see shortly of why they are a little bit different. But let's dive inside and see how I built this. So I actually started with a geometry which is pretty, pretty similar to a lot of um, setups which is our squab. I like to call him Craig for some reason. So I'm going to change my background to a dark. This is pretty much it. I just scaled him up. And I removed his shader. He always gets um, added into the scene with the default shader, and I've just removed it because we don't need it at this point. For the mountain, I just made him a little bit Yancy. It doesn't really matter what shape you turn him into, but I just added some variation. I also added an attribute noise um, with a CD, so I've, it automatically defaults to CD or the color. And then I've just played around with the distribution ramp and remapped the noise and animated it over time. And then I've just scattered some points. So these points should move across them. And there's about 5,000 of them. And the densi density attribute is CD. So in our pop net, we've got some cool things starting to happen. All right, so around frame 31, this is what this looks like. So you can see it just kind of turn and spin. For the simulation on this level, I did not change anything, so let's dive inside. I'm going to hit L on my keyboard. And for the source input, I've changed, we'll get there in a second, um, I've changed the emission type to all points. And for birth, I've just told it after frame 34 to stop emitting points. So it just kind of looks like that. For the pop winds, these are the changes I made. And for the pop axis force, I'm just done this. So the orbit speed is two, lift speed is 0 0.7, and the suction speed is 1.44. And the radius and height are 10 10. And this is all uh, working because the squab is at zero, zero in the scene, so the pop axis force can grab it effectively. And that's pretty much it. So diving outside of here, I've deleted all the attributes except for the velocity. I've gone to the file cache, and I've just cached everything out to the my disk. So after this point, it should be easy to see how much the emitter changes. I've added a time shift, so I froze it around frame 76 because I kind of just like that shape. It's really kind of messed up, and it's highly practical particles. And then I've added a null, which those particles out. And now the fun part begins, and as you know, I always like to keep my pyro in one little object node. So I'm going to explain how I did this. If you haven't seen my other tutorials, I also explain this, this process in them as well. So I've created a dot net, put this down, dived inside, making sure I have my particles selected, so dive inside, go to the object level, go to your pyro effects tab, and click billowy smoke. And it should create a billowy smoke creation inside your DOFNet. And that's pretty much how I created the basic setup of it. And then for the two import pyro fields and the import pyro visualization down here. All I did was go to this pyro import node that appears when you create your pyro simulations. 
And I've copied these and I've pasted them in my clouds node. So that's pretty much how they got in there. So I'm gonna delete this, dive inside here, and just delete this setup and walk you through the original one down here. I'm also gonna delete my render node because I don't really need that. So I've gone to create density. Particle separation is this. Add noise, haven't really changed too much here. But you can see the changes. And for the rasterization, turn down the voxel size to 0 0.08 and the particle size to 0 0.2. And then it's, there's just an null that goes out density, which feeds it into our dog net. And this one's a little bit high res. I'll just dive inside here and I'll go over to here. So for my full res sim that you saw posted earlier on the community tab on YouTube, that's a full res sim with the division size at 0 0.08. Um, if you want to make changes to the simulation, you should probably have it higher around 2, 3, just so you can have an operating system still functioning while you're simulating smoke. So I'm just going to keep it like that while I demonstrate how this whole simulation works. At the source density from clouds over here, um, I've cranked up the density to 3 and the velocity to 3 as well. I've added a pop axis force of a speed of orbit speed of 0 0.5, lift speed of 0 0.1, and a section speed of 2. I've then added a radius of 12 and a height of 9.97. And that's pretty much the forces on that end. For some other variation in this smoke, I've added a gas winds. Haven't really changed too much there, other than the turn speed and the wind scale, which are zero, uh, 0 0.3 and 0 0.7. And then for the gassy turbulence, I've put that at a 0 0.181 and turbulence at three. And those are pretty much the changes that I made from the original node. And for the resize container, I've just turned off clamp to max bounds. So let's sim that out so you get a better idea what's going on and I'll be right back. So we're back. So around frame 60 is like where simulation starts to build out and you can see it poofing out in these two directions. Oh and I forgot to, I don't think I explained the pyrosolver. Um, so we'll get back to that. The pyrosolver, um, the shape dissipation is 0 0.06 disturbance is 2, and the turbulence is 0 0.2. Simulation, temperature of diffusion is 0 0.3, cooling rate is 0 0.6, and the buoyancy and direction are these. Combustion didn't really change much. And the dissipation field is this. Disturbance, block size didn't change it, it's pretty big though. You can choose what you want to do with that. So yeah, this is what our simulation looks like. And that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna zoom out to here. And in this case, I'm using our pyro import, pyro fields. So it's got our little values in there. And I've cached everything out. This file cache is holding the high res sim that you saw earlier. So it's quite heavy and it will take a long time to cache out, just FYI. And the time shift is to frame 120 because that's the frame I think looks the best. This time shift also has the render flag on it. So you're rendering from that node. If you don't, it will render from, if you don't change where the render flag is from the default settings, things will go wrong. So let's look through camera one. Naturally, it would look like something like this. But if we go through here and we view it, we should see something cool start to happen. So this is the camera that you saw in the thumbnail of this video. So it's rendering this beautiful little smoke simulation. And all I've done to get this camera, getting that angle, is to translate it to these rotations. And then I've also gone over here and projected it onto a lens shader. And the reason I'm using lens shaders is uh, another reason that I've explained in a previous video. Um, if, if you're trying to mimic something that has a lot of 
lens distortion in it. Um, so in this case, for a hydrodynamic simulation, which is something I was trying to replicate here, um, if you look up hydrodynamic simulations at NASA, basically all it is is they're changing the fluid currents and the flow rates of liquids or gases. So they flow, flow through a medium at different rates, and that's how they can replicate different equations in, in, a, in a controlled environment. So they're very hard to understand, but that's pretty much my understanding of them. And because they are in a fluid or a gas type of container, there is a certain amount of lens distortion that happens. So projection, once again, is either a polar cylindrical or lens shader, and I love using my lens shaders for this type of distortion. So I've switched it over to that. Um, yeah, and those are pretty much the changes that are made to this one. For CAM2, this is um, a slightly different one. It's a little bit darker and a little bit more moodier. Or not. But it's, um, you can see a lot more of those faint billowy strands over there. And those, these are the translations. And this is the render view, so once again on a lens shader. For the material of the smoke, I've changed the emission down to zero, the smoke color to a 111, so pure white. And for the colors, these are my colors. So you may notice that these are very highly defined smoke tabs, and that's because I am not using motion blur. I have motion blur turned off um, on my node, so you, there is no motion blur. And I also have motion blur turned off on my mantra. So I've switched my render engine to micropolygon physically based rendering, and there is no motion blur. And that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. My name is Kate, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!